My name's Josh Kagan. I'm a cruiserweight and I'm uh, from Swansea, Wales. Um, yeah, so the first time I went to a boxing gym was down in the Premier, down in the Harvard. Um, it's a well-known amateur established gym in Swansea. Um, you know, I could just like the smell of the gym, um, you know, the noise on the bags, like, you know, kind of just tucked me in straight away. I, um, yeah, I loved it from the start, like. <laughs> From a young age, um, I wanted to fight, become a professional boxer. My father was a professional fighter, um, you know, so it was always like in the back of my head. I always wanted to do it, but it was it started to become more of a reality um, when I started working for Chris. Probably back, well, I left. Well, I was doing in school, but I didn't really go to school much. So when I started working for Chris, he was a professional fighter as well. So that gave me the push on really, and he always told me to become, you should do it as well. So I was a, I was a push in the right direction as well. Like, you know? Yeah, the hunger and the drive, I'd say it comes like the, the type of personality I am. Um, you know, like I'm a driven person, so I want to do well in boxing. I want to do well, like, like well, in my job as well. So that's, I feel like that is the type of person I am. I'm, you know, a competitive guy. Um, yeah, I know it comes. I just, I think it's just something I got inside me, like you know. Yeah, out of Swansea, you obviously there's like, you know, over the years there's been loads of um, good professional fighters. Like you've had like both sides of the scale. So you've had the journeymen. Like my father, he had 47 professional fights. Um, Miguel Matthews, but he's obviously not quite from Swansea, but he's up the vice way. I think he had something like 100 plus professional fights, like, you know, when he used to work in the mines, and then he'd be, he'd get a call up and he'd go fight in the night. And then obviously you've got the flip end of the scale then, the, probably the pinnacle of the sport in Swansea, I would probably say is Enzo, Ma Enzo McAnally, world champion of cruiserweight. Um, you've got Ricky Owen, Chris Ware, obviously was a Welsh title holder uh, from Swansea as well. Colin Jones, you know, the, it's, the list goes on and on, you know, and that's me probably not even touching or breaking the surface, you know? Yeah. In my professional debut, I know I'd done the training. Like, I didn't cut any corners. I believed in myself. I had, like, I was having hard sparring every week, twice a week, you know, good level boys. So that, it, you know, it gives you that confidence as well because like, you can stand there and you can say to yourself, right, I haven't, it's not as if I've skirted around the edge or like, you know, I haven't done my road running, I haven't done my sparring, I went through my pad work, my strength conditioning, I'd done it all. So, you know, I'd, I had that ultimate confidence in myself. Obviously I had nerves as well, but you know, everyone has nerves, do not they? So, yeah, I think that's where it comes from, it's just the belief in myself, but I'm knowing I am cutting no corners. Boxing, yeah, it's a tough sport. Everyone sees the end part of it, don't they? They see the fight, they see the results. If they win, they see if they lose. But no one sees you getting up like 5 a.m., 4 a.m., going for your road run, going to work then after it, then coming back to the gym and training, training when you're aching. Like, you know, you, no one sees this. They, you have a hard sparring session, you don't do the best. Like, your head's not, not in the shed, but like, you know, you haven't, you haven't done how you feel, so that puts you down. And then you've got to come back the next day, you've got to brush it off, you've got to keep going. It's, it's, it's a tough sport, like, you know, it's not, it's not easy pickings. Well, made loads of sacrifices, such as things as going out, my mates enjoy it, like, you know, my mates go out every week or whatever, holidays, etc. Um, you know, like, it's pretty much everything in it. Like anything you sort of enjoy in life, you've got to cut out, don't you? It's, it's, as, it's as simple as that. You can't, you can't do the both. Like you know, it's one or the other. I feel like. The link um, 
between myself and Pat, it, beca it came from, well, it, it came from Chris again, basically. Um, we were building this gym. We were up here, it was during lockdown, we were up here every day, you know, grafting away. And he sort of like was hand picking his people who he wanted for certain parts. So obviously we got classes, we got boxing, ABC. Um, obviously got weight gym stuff, guys. So the ABC came in and then Floyd Harvard's name got mentioned. And again, I didn't mention him earlier on, but he was a, a very excellent pro as well. I think he had something like 150 amateur fights. He was probably one of Wales most decorated amateurs. Um, so the, the link between myself and Pat came from Floyd. I was on about turning pro to Floyd. Floyd mentioned Pat Barrett saying like, you know, he's the man to go to. He does all the small old shows. He'll build you up. You know, he's a very good contact. And then that's how it came about. We, um, I think it was 24th of September last year, we set off to Manchester. And I was just saying earlier on now, we had a bit of a nightmare trip. It took us about 18 hours to get up there. Some freak accident or something. So it took, I think we set off at like 7 a.m. We got to Pat's office at 6 p.m in Manchester, I fell asleep on the motorway as well, all three of us did, so yeah, that was, that's where the link came from. Pat has a big part to play in my, my career, I believe. Um, like, obviously, the way, like, just, just, even just today now, sending yourself down here, getting an interview like this, it, you know, it's not, no, it's not heard about really in Wales. You don't, it doesn't happen. That's why I went to the sign with Pat to set myself sort of like aside from everyone else. You know, he get, he said when I went up there, everything he said, you know, it like I could feel, I could work with, like, you know. Um, he was saying about guaranteed shot, um, fights, etc. You know, all all the things he was saying was like I could feel that, that was what I wanted to get out of the professional fight then. Yeah, um, you know, I think of all of him, to be honest. Um, I'm really happy I got signed, but well, I signed with him, and he's like, you know, willing to help me out as well, because I'm constantly looking at the Instagram, um, you know, and he's building up all these fighters now. Like when I was up there for the pro debut, we had all the boys in the gym, you know, like I'm obviously looking at the Instagram profiles, they're all going five, six and oh. And like it wouldn't be it wouldn't be able to do it with you if there was no small hole shows like Pat is putting on. I had a good chat with him when I was in Manchester last time. Yeah, the camp's been good. Um, you know. We've had the spar, we've had good sparring. Um, it's been a little bit trickier with the sparring this time because around here now, there's obviously we had the Welsh uh, ABA finals, which haven't been on for the last two years. So we have like struggled a bit, but it's, yeah, you know, we've had a good camp, loads of running, and you know, I'm feeling good. Picked up on stuff. The last fight that obviously Pat have been ringing me on the phone as well, saying what I need to do. Paul picked up on it and Chris as well. So, you know, I got three very like influential people there telling me, picking up on things. So, you know, just like tightening up, getting the basics right, basically, just not making any mistakes. So, just been working on the fundamentals. I think on the last one, um, I showed I could go forward. I could fight sort of on the inside, throw the short and ducks, but I can also fight on the back foot. You know, I can fight, be like Coop fight then, you know, keeping it nice and long, trying to pull them onto the shot. So you know, I want to showcase that a little bit more this time. I don't want to just be like, you know, charging forward, even though I was very happy with the professional debut. And I showed, I felt like I showed a very good work rate for myself, showed good, like, you know, up, up uh, shots, etc. I want to try to be a little bit more, um, Compose this time now, hold my feet a little bit more in the center and just, you know, just keep it nice and long and just, like you said, make no mistakes basically.